As the average Americans go about their daily lives, a dramatic shift has been underway at the central banks of the world. After being net sellers of gold for two decades, the central bankers did an about face in 2010, not long after the 2008 financial meltdown, and they became net buyers of the precious metal. From 2003 to 2009, central banks flooded the world with 2,880 metric tons of gold. But many Americans failed to notice because they were too busy watching the Big Bang Theory. In 2010, the tide finally turned and central banks took 77 metric tons off the market. But this had absolutely nothing to do with Gray's Anatomy, so few Americans noticed. In 2011, they took 457 metric tons off the market, or about 17% of annual world production for that year. In 2012, central banks bought a whopping 544 metric tons. Unfortunately, these purchases had nothing to do with American Idol and certainly had no place in an important discussion about the latest episode of Modern Family, so once again, the average American was unaware. In 2013, while most Americans were watching Dancing with the Stars, central banks gobbled up 409 metric tons. Latest estimates show that about 450 metric tons will be added to the central bank balance sheets in 2014, but sadly, this has nothing to do with the NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, PGA, NASCAR, WWF, so most Americans will never hear about it. At this point, I would like to mention that China is not included in the data that has been presented here because they have not reported their official gold holdings since 2009. I have made several videos on the tremendous gold demand from China in recent years. And as a result, no one is sure how much gold has been added in the last few years. Officially, they hold 1,054 metric tons, but with record gold demand of 2,199 metric tons, or 73% of annual world production in 2013, and a 2014 gold demand set to breach 2,000 metric tons, or roughly 71% of estimated world production, the central bank is sure to have gotten their hands on a large portion of that gold, and very likely have over 4,000 metric tons by now, if not much more. Another country worthy of note is Russia. Americans, I have a question for you. Why would Russia buy 77.5 metric tons of gold in 2013, 37 metric tons in September of 2014, which happened to be their largest purchase in 15 years, and 35 metric tons in October of 2014? After all, gold doesn't pay you a dividend or interest, right? And if things get real bad, you won't be able to eat it. I'm sure you've been told what a high-risk investment it is by your investment advisor. And he might have even reminded you that it's just a barbarous relic, like he learned in college. Many of you may have heard Warren Buffett's right-hand man, Charlie Munger, say that civilized people don't buy gold. After all, he was on CNBC, and I know many of you frequent that channel. And let's not forget Ben Bubbles Bernanke, who said that central banks still buy gold simply because of tradition. Let's face it, the average American is not interested in exchanging some of their hard-earned dollars for a useless piece of yellow metal. I would be willing to bet that the thought never even crosses most of their minds while they're engulfed in an episode of The Vampire Diaries or rushing home to fiddle with their trusty TiVo box to catch up on the last couple episodes of Once Upon a Time. So the ultimate question now becomes, what do central bankers, China, and Russia all know that the average American does not? Please stay tuned for part two of this video where we will discuss gold repatriation. Unless I happen to release part two during an episode of The Walking Dead, then of course I understand why you wouldn't be able to tune in.